What a beautiful and graphic portrayal of repentance. The son says, I'm not going. Somebody sins. And then they turn back to God and ask forgiveness. It's over. Which of the ones, you know, or the other one is, oh, sure, I'm going to all do everything fine. It never does anything. So our Lord is trying to help us grasp what it means to really do the Father's will. It means to listen to him and to do it. And when we don't do it, to go back to him and say, I repent, and then get going. This is a beautiful message as we're getting ready, you know, for the grace of Christmas. It's the call <coughs> to repentance. There's a beautiful line uh, in the first reading, which is uh, very profound. Uh, it, Jacob is promised. Huh? On that day, you need not be ashamed of all your deeds, your rebellious actions against me. Now, he's talking to the city, but he's talking to everybody in the city or the country. The philosophers, they're, some of them are pretty smart fellows, they say, we have experiences in life <coughs> that we call limit experiences. Because of them, we know there's something else, even if we can't get there. And shame is one of them. That's why so often in uh, Advent, we're promised, as here, you won't know shame. Why? Because I will so forgive you, and you will so know you're forgiven, that you won't know shame. What a delicate, sensitive God we have to promise us. You, you know, you're not going to know shame. So what's the limit experience anyway? Well, death is one, too. We, we know that it doesn't have to be this way. We know that it could be another way. We experience a limit. Shame is a limit experience because though we don't know anything else, we can extrapolate to something else. We can figure out, it doesn't have to be this way. And that's the Lord's promise. I will so forgive you that you won't know any shame. What a promise, and how well he knows us, that he would know that. So you see, It's, um, remember Adam and Eve, and uh, they sinned, and then they were ashamed. They weren't ashamed before. They had unveiled communication with each other. They were naked and they knew no shame, but not just physically naked. They weren't covering anything over. They had unveiled communication. And when they sinned, they had shame. Now, when the Lord finally transforms us and brings us into eternal life, you see, we know no shame. But the promise is still there, and it works even now. This is such a... I can't get over it thinking that God our Father knows that we're ashamed from our sins. And our sins are rebellion against him. Not somebody else, him. And he's the one who promises, I'll take away your shame. I'll so forgive your sins that you'll stand up there straight and tall and not be ashamed. What a promise. You know, it says in Psalm 32, Blessed is the man 
uh, whose sins are forgiven, whose guilt is covered over, whose rebellion is pardoned, and <clears throat> in whose lips there is no guile. You say, how does the last one go with the first three? Then if you go on and read the psalm, <clears throat> the psalmist tells us, I was sick, I was miserable, your hand was on me, until I acknowledged my guilt. And then we see that duplicity, this, um, uh, the first three things, or the last thing rather, in whose mouth there is no guile. Why no guile? Because there's no shame. He's forgiven. Blessed is the man who is forgiven, whose sins are covered over, whose guilt is wiped away, because on his lips there is no guile. We're all liars because we're worrying about our sins. Well, there's another way out. The Lord promised it. That when my son comes among you and you turn to him, you will be so forgiven that you will not know shame and you'll stop lying. What a lovely promise, isn't it? And how well he knows us. Isn't it so, you think of that. So it's a limit experience, you see, shame. We, but we can extrapolate to no shame. But we can do better than that. We can let the Lord so lead us to genuine repentance. I confess my <coughs> sins to the Lord. That we know forgiveness. And a forgiven person is not a liar. We don't have to lie about anything. See what a gift it is? And that's why a couple of times during Advent, we hear in one or other of the prophetic writings this promise, no shame. And it happens by the work of God. That's the fruit of repentance, of acknowledgement, is to know the forgiveness of God and to know no shame, and therefore to have no guile. We're lying all the time because we're ashamed, and we're so trying to make up for that somehow. It doesn't work, but there is something that works. Going to the Lord and repenting and, and letting the Holy Spirit make us honest, honest, and then we can speak the truth. <clears throat>